Hi, my name is Don Cislo. Today I'm going to go through the CPAP skill with you and discuss the equipment involved. CPAP O2 Max. Hello, my name is Angie Lomelli and I am an EMS educator. I am presenting you with a series of educational videos designed for you to practice as you watch. I hope you enjoy your learning experience with Lomelli EMS Productions. Now let's get started. Performance Objective The rescuer will demonstrate ability to assess and care for a patient in respiratory distress utilizing the CPAP device. Taking more than 15 minutes is a fail for this skill. Disclaimer, although it is important to always utilize PPE, the rescuers in this video may not be wearing PPE at all times. Conditions, the patient is 46 years old in respiratory distress. The simulated patient would normally answer the questions appropriately pertaining to their signs and symptoms. For this skill, the oxygen regulator is already attached. PPE, EMS jump bag stethoscope, SPO2 monitor, oxygen tank regulator with disc port, CPAP equipment box, mask and head straps, corrugated tubing, fixed flow generator, PEEP valve and nebulizer port, nebulizer with oxygen tubing, Scene safety and PPE. The skill will begin when the rescuer states the penman protocol and forms a general impression of the patient. When nebulizing a patient, make sure that you don your N95 mask. Rescuer states, I would perform Penman and report the patient's general impression. When nebulizing medications, I will also wear an N95 mask. Patient contact. Hi, my name is Don. I'm an EMT. I'm going to help you. If appropriate, place the patient in a high thalar position and obtain a complete set of vitals, including SpO2. Then assess the patient for lung sounds. Rescuer states, hello, my name is, I am an EMT. I am going to help you. If possible, I would position my patient in high Fowler. I would obtain a set of vital signs, SpO2, and I would assess lung sounds. Indications for using CPAP. Rescuer states, the patient is at least eight years old, History of CHF with pulmonary edema and one or more of the following. Pedal edema, orthopnea, anxiety, diaphoresis, sudden onset of shortness of breath. Rescuer states, the patient has signs and symptoms of severe asthma attack, pneumonia, COPD exacerbation, near drowning, severe respiratory distress, severe pulmonary edema unrelated to CHF, if the patient is unresponsive and a DNR or POLST specifying comfort care is in force, CPAP is indicated. Contraindications Rescuer states, the CPAP contraindications are less than 8 years old, severe altered level of consciousness, ALOC, respiratory or cardiac arrest, nausea and vomiting unable to maintain patent airway, due to increased risk of aspiration. Systolic blood pressure below 90 millimeters mercury, major trauma, head injury or chest trauma, pneumothorax. Relative contraindications. Rescuer states, history of pulmonary fibrosis, decreased level of consciousness, LOC, inability to tolerate a mask, COPD patients with recent exacerbation, brittle COPD. 
Rescuer explains CPAP treatment and reassures the patient. When selecting the regulator, make sure you pick one with the disc port. This regulator does not have one. Also ensure that you have an O-ring inside, a rubber gasket. CPAP masks come in various sizes. Make sure you select the appropriate one to ensure that your patient has a good face seal. There will be various head straps to attach the mask, as well as Velcro adjusting straps and a adjustable temple tab to adjust the pressure on the patient's face. Inside the CPAP kit, you will also find a corrugated hose. This hose can be expanded as required to stretch between the patient and the oxygen supply. Into one end of the corrugated hose, insert the flow restrictor, the opposite end of the corrugated hose is inserted into the peep valve, as I'm showing, and then the peep valve is connected to the CPAP mask. If nebulization is required, there is a T connector on this peep valve just below, which I'm going to expose here, and then the nebulizing connector can be inserted, as I'm showing. The other end of the nebulizer hose is attached to the barb connector on the oxygen tank regulator. The green threaded end of the flow restrictor should then be attached to the disc port on the oxygen tank. Once you have connected the regulator to the tank, make sure it's on zero and you open up the tank all the way. And when you complete your turn, you're going to turn a quarter turn back, let it rest. Connect the CPAP to the disc port. Make sure that you enter carefully and evenly. If it doesn't work and you feel that it's stripping, remove it and try again. You want to be careful because this is made out of plastic and the disc port is metal. Once connected, you will hear the oxygen flowing through the CPAP mask. When you're done, simply disconnect your CPAP tubing. And to bleed the regulator, you just make sure it's still on zero. And you are going to turn it until it stops. And open up the flow meter to allow the regulator to bleed. Make sure you set it back at zero. There are three levels that can be set using the peep valve by twisting the knob on the top here. I've set the peep valve at seven and a half. Encourage the patient to apply the mask onto their face. Remove the CPAP mask if the patient becomes anxious. For patients that are unfamiliar with CPAP, I would ask the patient to hold the mask and place it on their face in a position of comfort before I adjusted it and attached the head straps. Place the straps and if needed, make any adjustments. Be sure to ask the patient to breathe normally and ask him how do they feel. If needed, you can pull on the corrugated tubing to make sure it extends 
the distance needed. Make sure that your peak valve is at 7.5. Once the patient is stable and comfortable, you may adjust the tension on the mask by tightening or loosening the side straps all the way around. To increase or relieve pressure on the temple area, squeeze these two levers here and make any adjustments that you need. Once the mask is in place, ask the patient, how do you feel? Breathe normally. If the patient becomes anxious or uncomfortable and needs to remove the mask, do so. Once the mask is in place and the straps are applied, check for leaks and adjust the flow rate as necessary. Rescuer assembles CPAP equipment. Rescuer verifies that the regulator has a disc port diameter index safety system. Caution: Avoid stripping the plastic threads when applying the fixed flow generator onto the disc port. Rescuer selects appropriate mask. Rescuer states, I would select the mask size that will cover the mouth and nose of the patient which assures a complete seal. Rescuer connects fixed flow generator, corrugated oxygen tubing, O2 CPAP valve with nebulizer port, and mask with head straps. Rescuer connects the fixed flow generator to the disc port on the oxygen regulator. With oxygen flowing, expands, stretches out the corrugated tubing. Holding the CPAP device by the bottom sets the flow rate on the PEEP valve to 7.5 cm H2O. Rescuer places the mask on the patient, preferably with the patient's assistance. Rescuer asks, how does that feel? Please breathe normally. Rescuer applies straps, checks for leaks, and adjusts flow rate as necessary. Rescuer states, I would reassess for positive indications when taking vital signs every five minutes. SpO2 of 92% or greater. Decreased respiratory rate to normal range. Decreased heart rate to normal range. Decreased blood pressure to normal range. Rescuer states, I would use my stethoscope to listen for lung sounds on anterior and posterior thoracic regions. Rescuer states, I would document the use of CPAP and the patient's response on the PCR. If the patient does not improve, ventilate with a BVM or have the paramedic perform endotracheal intubation if necessary. I would notify the receiving hospital that the patient is on CPAP. SPO2 and lung sounds, bonus footage. For the purpose of this skill, you may not be required to use the SPO2. However, on a real patient, you will be using it. There are different styles, manufacturers, sizes, and features. This one is really convenient and could be held by the palm of your hand. It does have two AAA batteries, so always have extra batteries in stock. This one is very economical and easy to use. You simply turn on the start button here and you press the clamps together and you place your finger inside. You're going to wait about 5 to 10 seconds for it to capture the pulse rate and the oxygen saturation. You'll see a display and it's still doing some adjustments. If the patient has a low oxygen level, anything under 94% oxygen saturation, you should be concerned. However, my saturation right now is at 98%. The number at the top is the pulse rate. And my pulse rate is fluctuating between 75 and 76 beats per minute. 
You will not be assessing lung sounds during the skill. This is simply stated. However, if this were a real patient, you would be assessing lung sounds from the upper pectoral region, the lower pectoral region, and mid-axillary line, just lateral to the nipple line. You're going to do that on both sides. If you have axis to the back, assess the lung sounds from the back as well. This concludes your instruction. Thank you for watching Lomelli EMS Productions and we wish you nothing but success in your future ventures. Now please take a moment to subscribe, like, comment, share, and don't forget to hit that notification button for future videos. Remember, live for today, learn for tomorrow.